in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most beneficent. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Well, introduce myself. My name is Namra Sarwar and I'm Department from BS Chemistry. I will submit to the presentation of Dr. Hamad Muji. Today we have discussed about the topic of electron microscope. What is electron microscope? An electron microscope is a microscope that uses a beam of accelerated electrons as a source of illumination. The wavelength of an electron can be up to one lakh times shorter than that of visible light photons. Electron microscopes have a higher resolving power than light microscopes and can reveal the structure of smaller objects. Basically, two types of electron microscope. First, scanning electron microscope and the second, transmission electron microscope. First of all, I will discuss scanning electron microscope in front of you. Have a look through the table of contents. Introduction, principle of scanning electron microscope, parts of scanning electron microscope, instrumentation, sample preparation, working of scanning electron microscope, application of scanning electron microscope, advantages of scanning electron microscope, and the second last limitation and the last one is cost of scanning electron microscope. What is scanning electron microscope? Scanning electron microscope is a type of electron microscope that can surface of microorganism that uses a beam of electrons moving at low energy to focus and scan specimen. The development of electron microscope was due to the inefficiency of the wavelength of light microscope. Electron microscopes have very short wavelength in comparison to the light microscope, which enables better resolution power. You can see the diagram. This is electron gun and this is the electron beam and this is a anode and this is a magnetic lens and this is a scanning soil and this is a backscattered electron detector and this is a stage and this is a specimen. Principle of scanning electron microscope. Incoming electrons can be reflected back scattered from a bulk specimen can release secondary electrons. Primary electrons are focused into a small diameter electrons prop that is scanned across the specimen. Electrostatic or magnetic field applied at ring angles to the beam can be used to change its direction of, of travel by scanning uh, simultaneously in two perpendicular direction, a square or rectangular area of specimen known as a raster can be covered. Image of this area can be formed by collecting secondary electrons from each point on the specimen. Next, I will discuss parts of scanning electron microscope in front of you. First, electron canon and this Screen for menu and image display, vacuum pump system and, and the operation panel with focus alignments and the magni, uh, magni, ma magnification tools and the obstacle for positioning. And the last one is cryo unit to prepare frozen material before insulation in the observation chamber in cryo scanning electron microscope mode. The major components of scanning electron microscope includes electron source, lenses, and the last one is detector. Electron source. This is where electrons are produced under thermal heat at a voltage of 1 to 40 kilovolt. The electrons condense into a beam that is used for the creation of an image and analysis. There are three types of electron source that can be used. First, tungsten, filaments, lanthanum, Exabrite and field emission gun lenses. It has several condenser lenses that focus the beam of electron from the source through the column, forming a narrow beam of electron that form a spot called a spot size scanning soil. They are used to deflect the beam over the specimen surface detector. It's made up of several detectors that are able to different differentiate the secondary electrons, backscattered electrons, and deflected backscattered electrons. The functioning of the detectors highly depends on the voltage speed, the density of the specimen. 
the display devices, data output devices, power supply, and the last one is vacuum system. And this is a diagram of scanning electron microscope. Electron gun consisting of cathode and anode, the condenser lens controls the amount of electron traveling down the column. The objective lens focuses the beam into a spot on the center. Deflection soil helps to deflect the electron beam as it attracts the secondary electrons. Additional sensor detects backscattered electrons and X rays. Next, I will explain instrumentation of scanning electron microscope in front of you. First one, a source of electron called electron gun. Second, lenses. Third, scanning soil. Fourth one, detectors to collect signals. Fifth one, sample study. And the last one is display data output device. So let's start. This is a scanning electron microscope. Electron gun is a condenser lens. It's a scanning soil. It's an objective lens. It's a secondary electron detector and a specimen. And the last one is display unit. Electron beam. It has two variable energy and current. The voltage is variable from about 1 to 60 kilovolt and the current from 1 to 7 to 1 to 12. These values are specific to the instrument model. Electron gun. It is used to produce the fine electron beam, also called as electron probe. Several different types of electron guns used are thermonic emission gun, field emission gun, and Schottky emission gun. First one, thermonic emission gun in front of you. A thin tungsten wire filaments act as cathode to generate thermal electrons by heating the filaments at 2800 Kelvin by applying positive voltage of about 1 to 30 kilovolt to the metal, metal plate acting as anode in order to collect these thermal electrons. By applying negative voltage to the Vanillate electrode placed between the anode and the cathode current of the electron beam is adjusted. This electrode also helps in focusing the electron beam. Thinnest point of beam known as crossover 50 to 20 micro diameter regarded as actual electron source. Crystal is used as a cathode. It is used to reduce spot size. It requires high vacuum due to its higher activity. You can see the diagram, it's a filament. This is a base power supply and it's a crossover 50 micrometer and accelerated voltage power supply. And this is the an anode and this is a vanillate electrode. The second one, field emission gun. Provides high resolution work on field emission effect. When high electric field is applied to the metal surface, a thin tungsten wire act as cathode welded to the tungsten single crystal whose tip is curved with the radius of about 100 nanometer known as emitter. Electrons are emitted from emitter through tunneling effect when positive voltage was applied to the extracting electrode. Holes created in the extracting electrode to allow emitted electrons to flow through it. Then electron beam containing some energy is obtained by applying voltage to the accelerating electrode present beneath the extracting electrode. You can see the extracting voltage power supply and this is the accelerating voltage power supply. And this is the emitter. And the third one is Schottky emission gun. Works on Schottky emission effect when high electric field is applied to heated metal surface. A tungsten single crystal tip radius few hundred nanometers coated with Z-Doro acting as cathode. Z-Doro coating reduces the work function to enhance the emission current at low cathode temperature. Thermal electrons are shielded from emitter by applying negative voltage to the suppressor electrode. Advantage electron beam current is highly stable because emitter is placed in ultra high vacuum of the order of 10 to 7 Pascal produces larger probe current. You can see the diagram. This is a heating power supply and is extracting voltage power supply and this is the emitter and this is accelerating voltage power supply. Next, I will explain lenses in front of you. To produce finest beam of electron with desired crossover diameter, 
Therefore, two level lens system used are condenser and objective lens made, uh, made of metal uh, cylinders with cylindrical hole which operate in vacuum. These lenses are located beneath the electron gun. Magnetic field is generated in the inner part of the lenses to focus or defocus the P. This is a, when the excitation of the condenser lens is strong, when the excitation of the condenser lens is weak. This is a specimen and this is the objective lens and this objective lens aperture and this is a condenser lens and this is a crossover. Next, I will explain role of condenser lens. First one is scanning soil, second one is sample state and the last one is detector. First one, scanning soil. These soils deflect the beam in X or Y direction in order to scan the sample surface in a raster pattern. Second one, sample state. It is a uh, motorized plate which has movement in three directions, X, Y, and Z, controlled by feeding value in the software. The samples are supported on it and move smoothly in the required direction, X and Y. The two horizontal movements are used to change the field of view, whereas Z, the vertical movement, is required for image resolution as well as depth of Focus. Along with these movements, rotation and tilting are also possible. Also, stage movement can be controlled manually through single click of mouse. And the third one is detector. Characteristics of sample are measured at different beam position to form image. Secondary electrons emitted from the sample are measured using secondary electron detector. Next, I will discuss secondary electron detector. It is consisting of pulse uh, scintillator coating at the detector tip and high voltage of 10 kW apply to it. The secondary electron emitted from the specimen get magnetized towards a positive voltage. Also, this secondary electron collection is supported by a supplementary electrode. The collector placed before scintillator by applying few volts to this collector. When they hit the uh, scintillator, light is produced, by, which is guided to PMT photo multiple tube through light guide. Then light is converted to electron, which are amplified as electric signal. And the last point, I will discuss display unit and recording system in front of you. The output in the form of amplified electronic signal is sent to the display unit to form scanning electron microscope image. Scanning is uh, synchronized with electron beam scan and brightness, which depends upon number of scanned electrons electron emitted on the display unit appearing on the monitor screen. Previously, CRT cathode ray tube was used as a display unit, but these days it is replaced by LCD liquid crystal display. Extremely fast scan speed is used while focusing our observation and slow speed used for capturing our saving image vacuum system. The microscope column and the specimen chamber is kept under high vacuum, 10 to 3 to 10 to 4 Pascal. The fusion pump is used to evacuate these components for oil-free environment. Turbo molecular pump is used for FE scanning electron microscope sputter. Oil pump is used as F scanning electron microscope is ultra high vacuum. This is a sample preparation of scanning electron microscope. Most specimens do not need any preparation and can be directly placed into the chamber. However, if a sample contains volatile components such as water, this has to be removed beforehand. Otherwise, the water would evaporate very rapidly in the evacuated environment. This would change the appearance of the specimen, a specimen or even damage it. That is why a dry, drying process of the sample commonly referred to a as fixation must be applied in order to exchange the liquid by a polymer. Prepared in this way, the specimen can now be imaged under vacuum. Non-conducting specimen accumulate charge under electron bombardment and electron beam throw cannot scan a charge object on this account. Sample needed to be coated with the conducting layer before being analyzed with the scanning electron microscope. Platinum gives a fine-grained coating and can easily be applied by a device called a 
sputter coater by applying this procedure known conducting samples can also be imaged with scanning electron microscope and good quality picture of the surface can be obtained especially via the sa detector next i will explain how does the scanning electron microscope work the source of the electron and the electromagnetic lenses are from tungsten filaments lamps that are placed at the top of the column and it is similar to those of the transmission electron microscope. The electron are emitted after thermal energy is applied to the electron source and allowed to move in a fast motion to the anode, which has a positive charge. The beam of electron activates the emission of primary scattered primary electrons at high energy level and secondary electrons at low energy levels from the specimen surface. The beam of electron interacts with the specimen to produce signals that give information about the surface topography and composition of the specimen. The specimen does not need special treatment for visualization under the scanning electron microscope. Even air dyed, dried samples can be exam uh, examined directly. However, microbial specimens need fixation, dehydration, and drying in order to maintain the structural features of the cells. And to prevent collapsing of the cells when exposed to the high vacuum of the microscope, his samples are mounted and coated with thin layer of heavy metal elements to allow special scattering of electric charges on the surface of the specimen, allowing better image production with high clarity. Continue the working of a scanning electron microscope. Scanning by this microscope is attained by tampering a beam of electron back and forth over a thin section of the microscope. When the electron reaches the specimen, the surface releases a tiny straw of electrons known as secondary electrons, which are then trapped by a special detector uh, apparatus. When the secondary electrons reach and enter the detector, they strike a scintillator alumin aluminescent material that fluorescence when struck by a charged particle or high energy photon. This emits flashes of light which get converted into an electric current by a photomultiple, sending a signal to the cathode ray tube. This produces an image that looks like a television picture that can be viewed and photographed. The quantity of secondary electrons that enter the detector is highly defined by the nature of the specimen ray surfaces to receive high quantities of electrons. Entering the detector while depressed surfaces have fewer electrons reached the surface and hence fewer electrons enter the detector. You can see the diagram. This is a vacuum and this is a specimen chamber and this is a specimen and stage and second denser lens. And this is a secondary electron detectors and this is a deflection and this is a stigmator and this is a condenser lens and this is a condenser aperture and this is a electron current and this is a anode and this is a, a, a alignment soils. Next, I will explain scanning electron microscope images. You can see the images. Next, I will explain Application of the scanning electron microscope. First, used for sport chemical analysis in energy dispersive X ray spectroscopy, used in the analysis of cosmetic components, which are very tiny in size, used to study the filament structure of microorganisms, used to study the topography of elements used in industry. This is the advantages of the scanning electron microscope. They are easy to operate and have user-friendly interfaces. Second, they are used in a variety of industrial applications to analyze surfaces of solid objects. Third one, it is easy to acquire data from the scanning electron microscope within a short period of time of about five minutes. And the last one is some modern scanning electron microscopes are able to generate digital data that can be portable. And the last one is limitation of scanning electron microscope. They are very expensive to purchase. They are bulky to carry. They must be used in rooms that are 
free of vibration and free of electromagnetic elements they must be maintained with a consist voltage they should be maintained with uh, access to co cooling systems and the last one is the combination of the working principle of scanning electron microscope and the transmission electron microscope from the scanning transition electron microscope. The scanning transition electron microscope uses a convergent beam of electrons to focus on a probe on the specimen and the probe is then scanned on its surface, collecting signals which are then collected as point-to-point -point foment images. You can see the cost of scanning electron microscope. 2018 cost of scanning electron microscope and 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023 and so on. Next, I will discuss transmission electron microscope in front of you. I will look to the table of contents. First, introduction, principle of transmission electron microscope, parts of transmission electron microscope, instrumentation, sample preparation, working, application, advantages, and the second last one is limitation, and the last one is cost of transmission electron microscope. What is transmission electron microscope? Transmission electron microscope is also known as also known as conventional transmission electron microscope or CTEM. Max Noll and Nurse Ruska invented it in 1933 in Berlin. Recent electron microscope based on transmission commonly contains a beam column which is around 2.5 meter tall and has a 30 centimeter diameter and has an ability to attain a 2A resolution. This technique utilized for analyzing the surface structure, morphology, surface imperfection, defects, crystal structure of the atom, size of the particle, and also sample composition. And this is a principle of transmission electron microscope. Electron emitted into vacuum from heated filaments will increase accelerating potential will have small wavelength. Such high energy electron can penetrate distance of several microns into a solid. If these transmitted electrons could be focused image with much better resolution, focusing relies on the fact that electrons also behave as negatively charged particles and are therefore deflected by electric or magnetic field. This is the parts of transmission electron microscope. First, electron canon. Second, vacuum pump system. And next, water supply to cool the instrument. And vacuum chamber for observation. And the sixth screen for menu and image display. And last one is operation panel. Next, I will explain parts of scanning electron microscope. The electron source consists of a cathode and an anode. Cathode tungsten filaments which emits electron when being heated a negative cap con uh, confines electrons into a loosely focused beam. The beam is then accelerating towards the specimen by the positive anode. Electro electron beam is tightly focused using electromagnetic lens and metal apertures. A platform equipped with a mechanical arm for holding the specimen and controlling its position. Electromagnetic lens system, objective lens, projector lens, and the phosphorescent screen. You can see the diagram. I will discuss instrumentation of transmission electron microscope in front of you. First one, source of electron. Second one, done based on thermonic emission. Third one, beam of electron. Fourth one, electromagnetic lenses. Fifth one, vacuum chamber. Sixth one, two condenser lenses, objective and intermediate lens. And the uh, third one, third last one, sample holder and stage. And the second last imaging device, phosphor or uh, fluorescent screen. And the last one is computer. Next, I will explain these parts. First one is electron gun. The accelerating voltage current of the filaments and therefore its temperature and the valence cap base voltage. 
The temperature of the filament strip is controlled by the filament current, which in turn controls the amount of emitted electron. The filament current is increased till the number of emitted electrons no longer increases, which actually means that filament is saturated in order to uh, maximize the emission. The passing current between the system having high voltage and ground is controlled by bias resistor setting, which in turn is controlled by the gun base. When small bias voltage is used, the vinylic negative potential is ineffective in com comparison to the filament, leading to poor focusing of the electron that are accelerating towards the anode. This results in the beam spreading, causing it to appear weak on the screen. When the basing is increased, the focusing action is improved. Therefore, the effective beam brightness is also increased, but beyond a certain value, the windlet is so negative in comparison to the filament that the brightness starts to decrease because electrons are not permitted to emit from the filaments, or in a case they are emitted, they are repelled back in the direction of the filament. Next one, electron magnetic lenses. Electron magnetic lenses consist of a huge bundle of windings of ins uh, insulated copper wire, a soft iron cost and pole piece. A magnetic field is in, uh, in, uh, induced by the current in the winding and reaches its main strength at the pole piece of the lens. The accelerated electrons uh, entering the magnetic field are deviated by a Lorentz forces. The direction of both magnetic field as well as electrons defines a resultant force, which is always perpendicular to the plane. In conclusion, the electrons take a circular path through the lens system. And the third one is condenser lens system. The beam diameter is reduced and controlled by condenser lens system. The purpose of the first condenser C1 lens or support size, which is a strong lens, is to magnify the electron source image by around X1 over 100 to provide a small point uh, source at the crossover that is more uh, coherent than large 50 up diameter tip of the filament. The purpose of the second condenser C2 lens brightness or intensity, which is a weaker lens, is to project the uh, demagnified image of the source on the top of the sample by a magnification of X2, giving an overall de uh, de uh, demagnification of X1 over 50 illumination spread into the, the screen is controlled by the lens. A part named condenser aperture is poor is positioned just below or sometimes between the condenser lenses. Its role is to uh, collimate, uh, for example, making parallel the beam of the electron as well as modification in its density. Next, I will discuss intermediate lenses in front of you. The reasons behind the back of focal plane being very close to the lens itself is because the magnification factor of the objective lens is larger. Aperture of the objective, it is the middle aperture on the column, is mounted in the back focal plane. The selected area aperture sits in the first image plan below the specimen, which is below both the objective lens and the objective aperture. By alter, uh, altering the first projector lens excitation, also known as intermediate lens or diffraction lens, either an image or diffraction patterns in produced. And the next one is specimen holders and stages. In transmission electron microscope, the electron solution does not offer a lot of space for the sample. Further, the sample should be fine, uh, thin so that the electron can be penetrated the specimen to produce an image. The average thickness of a biological specimen should be around 70 nanometer for a transmission electron microscope with an acceleration voltage for the electrons of 100 kilowatt high voltage allow the investigation of thicker samples. Thin section of the sample are mounted on copper gr grids of three millimeter diameter, which are av available available in a wide variety of materials and mesh size. The grids with the section on top are attached 
in the holder and introduced into the goniometer of the transmission electron microscope through a vacuum lock since the system always stays under high vacuum the goniometer is the mechanical step which enables highly pre uh, precise and stable control of the specimen holder during imaging you can see the diagram specimen holder and the specimen on a transmission electron microscope grid is a three millimeter Vacuum system, as electrons are readily scattered, electrons have a mean free path of one centimeter at atmospheric pressure. However, at 10 to 6 Pascal, that can be, they can have mean free path as high as 6.5 meters. The purpose of the vacuum system is to provide insulation between the filaments of both anode and cathode as well as in the region around the field emitters, thus hampering a undesirable uh, discharge of the electron gun in order to inhibit the oxidation and burning out of the filament oxygen is eliminated around the filament. Samples contamination is decreased by reducing the interaction uh, amongst electron beam and molecules of the gas. It's the longer bomb, bomb at, at 10 power minus seven and 10 power minus 10 MPR. And this is a turbo molecular pump, oil diffusion pump, it's a 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 7 amber. And the rotatory pump, 10 to the power minus 0 and 10 to the power minus 2 ampere. This is the atmosphere, 1000 mR ampere. And the next one is image modes of transmission electron microscope. Bright field microscope and dark field microscope. In bright field imaging, the image of the sample is created by the electron that pass through the film without diff uh, diffracting. A, uh, di a, di a diagram is used to stop the diffracted electron in the corresponding dark field imaging mode. The image is formed by the diffraction beam. The technique is called as bright field, which is mainly sensitive to extended crystal lattice defects in an otherwise ordered crystal, for example, dislocations. You can see the diagram. Uh, this is a bright field imaging and this is a off axis dark field. Next, I will discuss sample preparation in front of you. Electron transparent sample must be used if not the whole sample, at least the ROI should be thin. The allowed thickness value for the metallic sample is 30 to 50 nanometer. Usually 100 nanometer, uh, 100 nanometer is an upper limit for the sample thickness. The sample must be mechanical strong for treatment. Transmission electron microscope samples are either self-supported or mounted on a grid for analysis. Copper grids are the most commonly used through for high temperature work. MO grids are used for nanoparticles and thin filaments. AC film is used as support. AC has low contrast in the transmission electron microscope and will not obscure the contrast arising from the specimen. Huh. How does a transmission electron microscope work? First of all, a tungsten filament is heated, which is also called an electron gun. The heated tungsten filaments or electron gun will start to release electron beams and electromagnetic soil and high voltage up to several million volts apply to the apply to these electron beam to accelerating their speed, extremely high speeds. A condenser lens with a high aperture eliminates all the high angle electrons and focused all the electron beams into a thin small beam. The high speed electron beam are not transmitted through the specimen. The transmitted electron beam are focused into an image with the help of an objective lens. The vaccine's chamber uh, of transmission electron microscope prevents the collide of electrons with the gas atoms. The electron beams are projected onto a phosphorescent screen which creates an image of the specimen also called a micrograph. All the images are captured by a charge coupled device CCD camera which is located uh, underneath the screen. 
this is the application of transmission electron microscope. A transmission electron microscope is ideal for a number of diverse fields such as life, science, and technology, medical, biological, and material research, forensic analysis, gemology, and metallurgy, as well as industry and education. TEMS provides to topographical, morphological, compositional and crystalline information. The images allow the researchers to view samples on a molecular level, making it possible to analyze structure and texture. This information is useful in the study of crystals and metals in addition to industrial applications. Transmission electron microscope can be used in the semiconductor analysis and the production and manufacture of computer and silicon chips. And the second last one is advantages of scanning transmission electron microscope. A transmission electron microscope is an impressive instrument with a number of advantages such as transmission electron microscope offer the most powerful magnification potential over 1 million times or more. Transmission electron microscope have a wide range of application and can be utilized in a variety of different scientific, educational, and industrial fields. Transmission electron microscope provides information on the element and compound structure images are high quality and detailed. Transmission electron microscopes are able to yield an insight of the surface features, shape, size, and structure. They are easy to operate with proper training. And this is the Scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope cost. And this is the references. That's all from my side. Thank you so much.